In this video, you're going to learn how to write equations of piecewise functions, and we're going to go through three examples together. So let's dive in. The first example here, we're given this graph. How do we write an equation to represent this graph? Well, you can see that this graph is actually like in two pieces, and that's why they call it a piecewise function. You have this piece, and then it jumps up to here, and you have this piece. So it's like almost like two different graphs in one. But notice it's still a function because for every x value, there's only one y value. Even right here, where it seems like they overlap, this is open, this is closed. If we do that vertical line test for a given x value, there's only one y value. So it passes that vertical line test, or for every x value, there's one y value. For every input, there's one output. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as uh, f of x, or you could say y, equals, and we're going to write this in two parts. So I like to work from left to right, and this first uh, graph that we're coming into contact here with is this diagonal line. And notice that this has a y-intercept of 2, and it has a slope of rise 2, run 2. That's a slope of 1. So this equation would be 1x plus 2, but that represents a line that's continuous. This line is not continuous. It's only when the x values are to the left of the origin, or the left of 0. So to say that, we're going to say where x is less than, but not equal to zero. If it was equal to zero, this would be a closed circle, meaning it would include that point. This is like a hollow, meaning it's open or it doesn't include that point, and that's why we're saying less than, but not equal to. Okay, now if we jump up to this line here, this is actually like a horizontal line. And we know that horizontal lines are y equals lines. They have a zero slope. So you could say y equals one, two, three. Y is always equal to three, but that's when what? when x is 0 or to the right of 0. So we say x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, some mistakes that students sometimes make is they'll start to say, oh, uh, when y is less than 2, because they see this is like 2 or, or below, you know, like below 2. Or they'll say, but you don't want to do that. You want to think about for what x values am I dealing with? As I scan from left to right, when x is less than 0, I'm on this graph here. When x is equal to 0 or greater, meaning to the right, I'm on this graph. And so that's how you write your piecewise function. Let's look at another example, number 2, here. So what do you think for this one? Well, let's start off by saying f of x equals, let's make a bracket here. I like to work uh, from left to right like this. And I can see that this line here, if it was a continuous line, what would be the equation of that line? Well, I can see it has a slope of rise 1, run 1, so that's a slope of 1, and it has a y-intercept of negative 1. So using the slope-intercept form, or the y equals mx plus b form, I could say that this is y equals x minus 1. Okay, but that's when x is here at 1 or to the left. So how do we say to the left? That's less than or equal to... One. Now again, remember, equal to means it, it's closed or it includes that point. Less than means to the left. Now, you don't want to make a mistake and start thinking about the y's like, oh, when it's below zero here. You know, no, we say for what x values am I dealing with? So we're kind of working our way from left to right across the graph. When I'm less than or equal to one, I'm on this line, okay? And it only is this portion. Otherwise, the line would continue, right? Now, for the second part here, this line, this one's a little bit more challenging. We've got a slope of, let's see, down two over 3. That's a negative 2 thirds slope. Let's write that down. So slope equals negative 2 thirds. But we don't know what the y-intercept is. It looks like it's going to cross somewhere in between 2 and 3. So how do we find that y-intercept? Well, we could pick a point that's on the line. Like it looks like this goes right through 4, 0. Okay, so let's write our point here, 4, 0. So remember the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. We know that when y is 0, the slope is negative 2 thirds, and x is 4. Oh, okay, we can solve for our b value, our y-intercept where it crosses. Uh, this gives us negative 8 thirds plus b. I'll just add 8 thirds to both sides. Okay, that's our b value. So now we have the equation of our line. It's y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 8 thirds. Okay, but now let's put our restriction. So our restriction is when x is what? To the right of 1. We don't want it to equal 1 because this is hollow or empty. So it's greater than 1, meaning to the right of 1, you're on this graph. Again, notice it passes the vertical line test. 
Okay, so for a given x value, there's only one y value. This is closed here, this is open here, okay? And again, 8 thirds is like 2 and 2 thirds, so it's crossing right about there. It would be hard to estimate that just by uh, visually looking at the graph, so that's why we did a little bit of uh, algebra here on the side. So let's take a look at one more example. See if you can pause the video and do this third example on your own, and we'll go through it together. So this one's interesting because we actually have three pieces, and there's really no limit. You could have four, five, six, you know, uh, as many as you want. So in this case, uh, let's start off with uh, f of x equals, let's draw our bracket. I like to work from left to right. So starting with this first piece here, it looks like we have a horizontal line. And again, remember horizontal lines are y equals lines. And in this case, it's going to be y is equal to negative 2. Again, we don't want the entire line. So we're going to make a little restriction or a constraint here. And that's that when x is less than or to the left of negative 3. Okay, so x is less than negative 3. Not equal to, otherwise this would be closed. Okay, and uh, that's, that's it for that piece. Okay, so now for the next line, again, visualizing this as a continuous line, it has a y-intercept of 2, and it has a slope of rise 2, run 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So that means that this line is going to be 1x plus 2 y equals 1x plus 2. And that's in between negative 3 and 0. So that's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 0. So we have to write this as a compound inequality. So x is in between negative 3 and 0. When you write the compound inequalities like this, you always want these to be less than symbols or pointing to the left. You put the variable in the middle, the smaller number on the left, the larger on the right. Okay, that's the way that you write those. And again, closed here, so equal to. Open here, so less than but not equal to. And that's the middle, uh, middle graph here. Now the third piece, again, visualizing this as a continuous line, we can see it has a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. That's a negative 1 slope. So this is just going to be negative x but that's where x is to the right of 0. Okay, so that's going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. Why equal to? Because it's a closed circle. It includes that point. Greater than means as we're going to the right. And you got it. So great job if you're able to follow these three examples. If you want more practice with piecewise functions, uh, specifically how do you graph them given the equation, okay, so kind of working the other direction, that's what I talk about in that video right there. So. Follow me over there. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.